Sometimes in gaming, we are sold a false narrative. From box art to concept drawings, cinematic trailers, and overall hype for games can lead to consumers making a decision based on marketing material versus the actual gameplay. As fans of gaming, this practice has become commonplace. As developers become more sneaky and less transparent, I begin to wonder, could this be listed as false advertisement? Let's go ahead and take a closer look. What's up guys, it's Nerku back at it again for a brand new video. If you're new here, consider subscribing because I make a variety of videos twice a week. Also, for more of my thoughts on the gaming industry as a whole, go ahead and click the link down in the description below which will take you to my feature breakdown on Scrub Gaming Network. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're talking about. Evolve. Evolve was a massively hyped game, and I mean massively hyped. Released back in 2015 and developed by Total Rock Studios, everyone was ready for the next big thing. Gamers were tired of the same old franchise FPSs such as Call of Duty that have gotten stale over the years, and this Monster Hunter 4v1 PvP style game could have been the answer to all the prayers. So what happened? Nearly six months after this massive release, Evolve was nearly dead. And now, Evolve is so dead that it's free to play. Well, what ended up happening was they pretty much e ate the crap out of it and really upset the gaming community as a whole. And if I had to guess, there are three major factors that attributed to Evolve's failures. We could take a look at the controversy surrounding the launch as a reason for the game dying, the marketing of the game, and the overall poor decision making on the part of both 2K Games and Total Rock as factors that killed Evolve. Evolve failed to reach its full potential, and it's this very same full potential that us gamers were sold and ultimately were cheated out of. Number 1 launch controversy. If you were into gaming back in 2015, you remember the days when games launched with DLC and season passes. I'm not saying that these days are gone by any means, but Evolve took it to a whole nother level. Evolve launched with tons of bundles. These were price points ranging from a simple $60 standard edition release all the way up to a $200 ultra exclusive mega bundle. The names of these bundles escapes me at the moment, but I realized that it was ridiculous. They wanted the players to pay in advance for not only a season pass, but for cosmetics and future Monster Hunter unlocks that no one else had access to. If someone wanted to play Evolve with the standard $60 version versus someone who paid a little bit more, the game was completely unbalanced. For both the monsters and the hunters, the players felt cheated. These pay to win tactics were involved with a full AAA release title, not to mention that the game itself wasn't necessarily the greatest. The game felt completely unbalanced hollow and unmotivated. There was pretty much only one game mode and all the maps felt too large to make the game fun and exciting. The game had no story. Evolve was at the end of the day a running simulator where you raced around the map aimlessly to find a monster before it became too powerful to defeat. The cues and clues given in game to the hunters were weak and really didn't add much or aid the players in any way shape or form. And if you played as the monster, the original monster that is, and not some super upgraded DLC monster, you pretty much lost every round if the Hunters had anyone that wasn't part of the original 4 roster. Evolve as a whole was a sham. It promised too much and underdelivered. The game was bland and stale, not to mention the game wasn't even much to look at. The colors were washed out and the game didn't feel as exciting as the trailers. People felt cheated. Number 2. Marketing Garbage Evolve's marketing strategy was pretty much to Michael Bay the audience.
A new era has begun. The age of the Transformers is over. Horn blares, intense music, explosions, and a general sense of action horror promise more than what the game actually offered. If you look back at the launch trailers to this day, Evolve still seems like a fantastic game. But this is only in theory. In action, the game didn't match what was promised. The trailers showcased the first three monsters, the Goliath, the Kraken, and the Wraith. What they didn't tell you was that unlocking these monsters took forever unless of course you paid for them. I remember putting in 20 hours or so just as a monster to get the Kraken, and then when I finally got it, I was too powerful to kill. The trailers also showed off the Hunter classes, Assault, Trapper, Medic, and Support, where in many cases the Support was just a reskin of the Assault classes. Overall, the Hunters were just way too similar. This prompted poor game design. If I were one of the developers, I would have allowed the players to pick from a variety of classes that acted more as a suggestion rather than a forceful lineup. This would be similar to how Overwatch gives hints in game to tell you if your composition is weak or not. This really would have come in handy in practice considering which monster you were facing. Not to mention, in game the roles were locked. You couldn't swap characters or change roles. You had to fill the role that the team needed. The game forced you to do so. If someone picked first, then basically you had to pick the role that you weren't good at or that you didn't want to play at all. Then there was the featured reviews and oh how they lie. To be honest, this is why people feel that games journalism is dead today. Not just because of Evolve, but because of the lack of honesty and transparency in the community as a whole. Looking back to the launch trailer, we can see quotes like, winner of more than 60 awards 2014, 2014 best of show, Gamescom and E3. Which makes me wonder how Evolve got these awards. Were the awards based on the trailers as well? or on actual gameplay from people who actually played the games. Then we see other quotes like, genuinely thrilling, rock, paper, shotgun, or one hell of a game by GameSpot, or even intense by Game Informer. And makes me wonder, who, who reads Game Informer anymore? It just begs more questions than answers. When did they test these games? Who did they test the games with? What standards do they have for playing and play testing the games and for reviews? because when I played Evolve, there was a sense of wonder for about two hours. Then I wanted to grind to unlock the characters that I actually wanted to play. The luster of the new game wore off quickly, and I needed more. Once all the BS washed away, the poor sides of the gameplay, the poor map design, just the overall lackluster experience, I was left with utter disappointment. Evolve never improved as a game for the time when I played it. The matchmaking was terrible. The teams never communicated. I can honestly say that when I assembled a team of four, the game was digestible, but it wasn't fun. I felt that the overarching goal to win was just a caveat for unlocking more hunters to just play the game even more. I felt that my time in game was really for nothing. On the whole, the game was a chore, and I felt my money was wasted. Did I mention that I purchased the limited edition for about $80? I was coaxed and ultimately finessed into buying something that was a complete and total package of garbage. Number three, bad choices. Not that Turtle Rock was a bad dev team or anything, but they allowed the higher ups over at 2K to dictate what was released and how it was released. It was 2K games that came up with the genius marketing strategy to pull in the Call of Duty gamers. And it was 2K that ultimately decided to make those bundles and limited edition versions of the game. Why so many versions of the game? And then to still have standalone DLC on top of the season pass and on top of those limited edition purchases? This was complete and utter madness that was unprecedented. And now, when companies like EA release a game like Battlefront 2 2018 with pay to win tactics, then we really lose our shit. And we go ahead and as a whole, buy 9 million copies. I can honestly say that I'm disappointed with myself for buying Evolve. Because now, it's free to play but at least I didn't buy Battlefront 2. So from this moment forward, we all need to learn how to better avoid the hype and actually buy games that are worth our time and money. Now, I'm not gonna ramble about how we need to rally as informed individuals or as gamers. Just know that Evolve will ever be cemented as one of the biggest video game disasters of all time and probably the biggest disaster of 2015. Will we repeat the past in 2018? I really hope not. What did you guys think of Evolve? Was it as bad as you remember? Or was it as bad as I remember? Is it considered false advertisement? Tell me what you guys think down in the comment sections below. 
And, well, that's gonna be it for me, guys. Remember to ever so gently tongue punch that like button because it's super sexy and it helps me out a lot. Also, consider subscribing if you're new here because I make tons of videos on different topics. Lastly, if you guys are still here for some reason, then I really appreciate it and thank you. But go ahead and follow me on Twitter so I can give you guys uh, quick channel updates and share my thoughts with you guys. With that said, remember my name is Neraku, and I will see each and every one of you weird AF mofos in the next video. Peace. Now, boy.